Thank you. I give the floor now to the representative of Indonesia. Mr. President, Indonesia would like to exercise our right of reply to the statements delivered by Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, echoed by Nauru, Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, and Tonga regarding matters concerning Papua, a province of Indonesia. Indonesia is shocked to hear that at this important stage where leaders gather in this august body to address the early implementation of SDGs, the transformation of our collective actions, and other global challenges such as climate change, of which the Pacific countries are affected the most. The state leaders chose instead to violate the UN Charter by interfering in other countries' sovereignty and violating its territorial integrity. We categorically reject the continuing insinuations in their statements. They clearly reflect an unfortunate lack of understanding of the history, current situation, and progressive developments in Indonesia, including in the provinces of Papua and West Papua, and also an unfriendly and rhetoric political maneuver. Their politically motivated statements were designed to support separatist groups in the state provinces who have consistently engaged in inciting public disorder and in conducting armed terrorist attacks upon civilians and security personnel. Evidently, the statement made by those countries clearly violates the purposes and objectives of the UN Charter and the principle of international law on friendly relations among states, as well as the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. I repeat, it is a violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. It is highly regrettable and dangerous for states to misuse the United Nations, including this August Assembly. These countries are using the General Assembly to advance their domestic agenda and for some countries to divert attention from political and social problems at home. The said countries are also using false and fabricated information as the basis of their statement. The conducts of these countries undermine the UN Charter and are detrimental to the credibility of this assembly. Mr. President, Indonesia's commitment to protection of human rights is unquestionable. Indonesia is a founding member of the Human Rights Council. Indonesia has sat as member of the Council for three previous periods and is currently a member of the Council for the fourth time. Indonesia is the initiator of the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights and OIC Independent Permanent Commission of Human Rights. Indonesia has ratified eight out of nine core international human rights instruments, all incorporated into our national legal system. In compared, four by Solomon Islands and five by Vanuatu. Indonesia is among few countries who have a continued national action plan on human rights and currently is on its fourth generation of the plan from 2015 to 2019. Indonesia has an active and robust National Commission on Human Rights since 1993, vibrant civil society and free media. Indonesia is also a country with full-fledged democracy in function. With such a vibrant national democracy, coupled with the highest commitment to the promotion and protection of human rights at all levels, it would be nearly impossible for any human right allegations to go unnoticed and unscrutinized. Mr. President, we reaffirm that there are domestic mechanisms in place at the national level in Indonesia 
as well as at the provincial level in Papua and West Papua. For our part, Indonesia will continue to give appropriate focus to the development of Papua and West Papua provinces and to the best interest of all. In conclusion, Mr. President, we have a saying in our Asia-Pacific region, when one points the index finger to others, the thumb finger automatically points to one's own face. I thank you. I would like to thank.